Um, first of all, I just want to introduce Esther to everyone. Uh, and also, first of all, thank you so much, Esther, for joining us this evening. Um, um, so Esther, uh, as I wrote, maybe people saw her biography, but Esther spent over 20, I mean, 20 year, over 20 years learning, uh, coaching, uh, teaching around conscious parenting and education. Not only has she brought up two amazing children of her own, uh, but she's traveled to many different schools all over the world. She's set up schools. Um, she's coached dozens of families. She's run summer schools. Um, and she's also run the, the summer school for children at Plum Village at the summer retreat, which over a thousand people come to uh, um, with many children uh, for several years. Um, so it's a real privilege, Esther, to have you here. And I also have had personal experience of Esther's coaching uh as a parent so that's really uh and i can testify to it's it's um it's kind of deepness and, and also value uh and and an impact um not only on 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 uh, on my son as it were but also on, on myself so one thing i also want to say is people should feel free to put questions in the chat um throughout the evening or just to ask a question if you have a question at some point or there's something that esther's talking about but please feel free to put questions in the chat and i'll try and uh, integrate them into the discussion um it is a is a kind of open discussion um but i'm going to start uh with some questions for you esther maybe that could start this off and i guess one of them i wanted to start was this is a very concrete uh example what have you ever encountered a situation, for example, where a child, you know, I have this, uh, you know, I personally have this question of when a child maybe won't eat a particular kind of food or doesn't, or maybe doesn't want to particularly eat food, you know, not food at all, but will only eat one thing uh, or is very kind of um, picky about food. That, what would you, what, what, have you had examples like that that you've encountered and what, what kind of things would you suggest doing in that kind of case? Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here with all of you. It's really a pleasure. Thanks for, for coming and for your attention, because uh, for me, it's very important to be able to, to share all these experience, because I see that many times uh, it does help a lot. So it makes me very happy too. So thank you again. This is the, the first thing for, for being there and giving me this chance to share. So about food. Uh, it is already a very deep uh, aspect of conscious parenting. It seems something simple, but in fact, it touches many things like eating should be like a celebration, a, a very happy moment that we have food and it's normally really beautiful, like tasty and nice. And we are so lucky and it's so difficult to have like the food we have, like all the conditions they need. Uh, people to grow it, sometimes even airplanes to bring it and supermarkets. And, and we have this amazing fat feast in, in the table, but sometimes it's, it's not easy. We are not happy. We are tense and, and there, there are like fears and, and then the children don't seem to be happy no matter what we cook. Sometimes there is uh, problems like that. I did see many problems uh, around food. And it becomes like a, not a celebration time, but more like a difficult time. So it also like depends on, on the age. For example, for babies, now that I see a little baby here in the, in the screen, yeah. So you can see, I'm sure you can see your baby when, when you breastfeed the baby, the way he looks at you so deep. He's just in love of her mother. It's such a moment of, of togetherness. It's like an open heart. It's amazing. And it's really nice that uh, we can be there for the baby when we breastfeed. So it's not only about the food, but also about the relaxed environment we create, like the happiness, the presence. So we can also maybe touch his skin or her skin and speak softly. So it's a, a very important moment that we feed the body, but we also feed the heart. And sometimes it's not easy for us to do that because we have uh, inside of us, we are worried or maybe we are distracted, but this is something that 
we did practice a lot in the gatherings that I did uh, with some families during some years, that when a mother was breastfeeding, we wouldn't interrupt them. They would find a nice place, a quiet place, they would put uh, some cushions, and they would just be there with their babies and do their best, because sometimes it's for us not so easy to be present, but at least we did our best. And then for maybe uh, older children, Esther, uh, just yeah. one question. Just to say, the question I had is, did you have an example, rather than the entire, what, did you have an example of where there was a challenge and what, how mm -hmm. you, just, just to how bring, you how you helped with it, just as an example, rather than the general point, which I, I think is really valuable as well, but just to come to that mm -hmm. concrete, yeah. Yeah, for example, I remember a girl, a little girl, that she was uh, spending some time with us, with me and my two uh, children and she had a lot of difficulties at home she she was in a her mother was going through a lot of suffering so she could not really give her enough presence and attention and she didn't eat anything she was really thin and she didn't really eat anything so while we well while she was with us uh, I just didn't put any pressure on her to eat. I just uh, kept the rhythm, the normal rhythm we had at home. We had breakfast rhythm, then we had uh, some time off where I could offer fruit and nuts, but I wouldn't give any sugar or flour. And then we had lunch time and we prepared it with a lot of love and really beautifully. And she already told me, but I don't eat. And I said, it's okay in this house, you don't need to eat. It's not like uh, something you must do. We just prepare it. And if you want, you eat it. And if you don't want, you don't eat it. So I took a lot of pressure on her. And also it's true that during the morning we had been outside playing in the river and she was like kind of fasting somehow, no? Because I could see that in her house, she was picking now a biscuit, now a croissant, now something else. And then uh, at, at lunchtime, she was not hungry. And then she would ask a yogurt. So I didn't give any of those things and she could be uh, uh, really like uh, taken care. But it's true that when it was time for lunch, I put everything really beautifully and separately to help her because I know when they have problems sometimes to, instead of making, for example, a rice salad, you put a little plate with uh, carrots, a little plate with olives, a little plate with cheese, a little bit of rice and you put it separately and for them, it's a little bit easier to, to go for it. So I, it was really funny because she took the food in a way that I could not see it. Well, she thought I was not able to see it. She was like kind of hiding because I could see she was manipulating with this thing of I'm not eating. She wanted, it, it was her way to feel loved that people was worried about that. So she took a little bit of cheese, but ate it. Uh, in a way that I don't see it, and a little bit of carrot, and and like this, uh, she she ate uh, a little bit more. So in fact, uh, food uh, it's a lot about about other things that are moved, and we should we we would need a lot of time to to go deeper. But it's a very strong point that we work a lot in in conscious parenting. So what happened with? So you're saying just just take this one case, and how old? Someone asked how old was this girl? This girl was at that moment around seven years old or something like that. So she was about seven. And so what mm. you're saying is, you, first of all, you, one thing you, you'd noticed, because obviously you'd been around the family to kind of coach or whatever already, is you said that she was sort of eating. But so first of all, you had quite clear structure about food, which was there was a time for food. You then prepared the food with a lot of love. And what you said you started to see was that she would eat little bits, but what you saw was there was this sort of suffering and the not eating was a way to sort of be attended to. Yes, it was a, a kind of a, so this this gives, I, of course I could not do a very deep job because she was with us only uh, some time, not too long. But it's true that when you maintain a rhythm and when you take care of that moment and you don't put a pressure, you don't, you don't and it's difficult not to put a pressure because many times we connect with a fear, a very deep fear that we are not aware, but it's like a fear that they're gonna die or something. And we get really stressed because they don't eat. But uh, for me, if I, if I am relaxed, if I create the right environment where there are different things she can choose, 
And all of us, we were eating very happily, me and my children, and all that helps her to relax. And, and like this, she opened to, to eat that day in, in these uh, kind of conditions. Great. Okay, so let's come to another question. So maybe which is, um, how do you, let's say there's jealousy between two children, like siblings, or like yeah. or conflict. I mean, I know they're different. So one is sort of jealousy, particularly maybe, you know, uh, you and I have talked on this in the past about when children, you know, when a new child arrives, that has an impact on the older child or things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I just wonder if you could talk a bit about that and maybe start again with any concrete examples that you've seen and then come to mm -hmm. maybe the general point. Okay, so one, one example I, I remember very well, I, I was taking care of a baby, a little, very, very sweet, cute baby. And then the older brother, uh, sister, the older sister came from a school and I could see that she had a lot of like a, a, an energy, a quite a strong energy towards the baby. So she was like a, jumping really close to the baby and holding the hand really close. And you could see that it was a, a kind of a jealous, jealousy, like anger. And uh, in that moment, uh, I just, I was very aware of her suffering of the older uh, sister. And I did, I did put a very clear boundary. I said, I don't allow you to squash uh, your sister's hand like that, or I don't allow you to jump so close because she was so close that it could actually harm her. And, and she, she was trying to do it. Uh, and I said, I see you're not listening to me. So maybe if, if you keep doing this, I will have to uh, put you down the, the, the bed because we were on a, on a very big bed. And she kept kind of trying to do it. She, was not re she wasn't really able to do it because I was stopping her, but she kind of tried to, to keep doing it. So I said, okay, now if you don't go down by yourself, I will have to put you down the bed because uh, yeah, I didn't say much more than that. And she didn't go down to bed. So I said, okay, I wait a little bit more. If not, I will, I will pick you and put you down the bed. And she didn't want to be actually picked up. So she actually went down the bed and she was there kind of very close. And I said to her, I, I gave a lot of attention to her. I said, wow, I see that sometimes for you, like it comes like a, like anger inside of you. It's not easy, is it? And she was like, yeah, this comes to me. This comes to me and it's not easy. And I'm sad because I don't want it to come. So she could express what she was living and she could be respected. And I, I could understand the suffering she had. But at the same time, I was protecting the baby from, from that energy. So I was really giving her attention and listening to her. And it was a very nice moment of togetherness with her. And it's true that now I go a little bit to the theory. When a, a younger child comes, it's not so easy for the older one. First of all, it's because we need a lot of exclusiveness to feel loved, to feel unique. And sometimes when, when we are very busy uh, with our own life, and then we have a baby that demands a lot of attention, sometimes this exclusiveness, because they are older, it's a little bit too low for them, and it, that harms them. And sometimes I put an example like, Imagine that you are married with someone, with your couple, and, and one day he comes or she comes and they say to you, okay, in nine, mo in nine months, I'm going to have another partner. Another beautiful partner is going to come home, but I will still love you. But this is still a process and you really need to, to be assured. You really need that when the other partner comes, and imagine the other partner comes and everyone, oh, it's so cute, it's so beautiful. And you're like, God, where is my place here, you know? And then it is a difficult process that we need to take care and especially to give a lot of attention and, and still reassure that we still have time for them. And sometimes I say it's, it's also good that the mother is with the baby, but sometimes when, once the baby has uh, been fed and clean and spent some time, it's good that someone takes the baby and the mother can also, or the father can give, uh, but both of them. Because sometimes it's more like the father, but they need the father and the mother 
So it's uh, it's difficult to do it, but it helps a lot. Wow. Okay, that's that's really. Uh... So then maybe another example would be what if two children are are kind of fighting uh, whether I mean whether they're siblings or not siblings or whatever how do you manage that like kind of physical I mean uh, conf yeah conflict okay for me my 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 role and the role from the adults that we are in this in the same path of conscious parenting it's always to generate a safe environment for everyone so if there is a conflict uh, the first thing I do, because it also depends a lot on the moment, on the age, and many things. It's like now we are speaking very generally. But I remember one time I was in, in the little school that we, we made with some families, and there was this two and a half years old child and the other maybe some more or less the same. And when I, I, I saw it, they both were like really pulling, I think it was a doll, pulling the doll, they both wanted the doll, but there was so much passion in it, so much aggressiveness. Like they both wanted it and they wanted to scratch each other and, and pinch each other because they really wanted it. And in that school, there was a rule that it was very clear for everyone. It's like the first one that takes the material or the doll or whatever has the right to play with it and to share or not. But I was not in that moment present there to know who had taken it. And they were so little that they could not really talk or they would only say me, 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 you know. So I was there and at that very moment, all I could do was be present and look at them with a lot of love and a deep listening of what they were living and seeing their passion and their suffering and really make sure that they didn't hit each other, that they didn't scratch. I would stop that even with my with my hand, I would say, yeah, I see you really want it and you really like, but uh, I'm, I'm not allowing you to, to hit uh, your friend or the other child. And that was, I was doing that until they kind of come down a little bit. And I can't, it, it's true that in this case, I can't remember very much how it, it ended, but I remember very well that I had to really take care that they didn't hit each other. And then normally the solution comes by being there and listening and allowing them to express. But it's true that I don't remember the end of this one. <laughs> but it's, if you want, I can choose another one. Yeah, it would be good to explain maybe an old. So, so I'm just saying principle one would be you you protect from harm. So you stop, mm -hmm. you stop, obviously. And I'm saying this sometimes, you know, uh, so th that's point one. But yeah, if you had an ex other example, I also have this thing you keep mentioning, and maybe you should share, you keep saying they're suffering. You say you've several times talked about being, so for example, the girl that you mentioned with the, with the younger child, with the baby, how old was the girl who was on the bed who got off the bed? I think around five, four or five years old. But you said about listing like this moment of being with her and saying you're really angry. So I think there's something that's there also, and also something else that you just mentioned that I want to come back to, which is you don't make children share, which is very, I mean, I think is another point we should come to. Like often, I mean, I've seen it, I, I've seen my, in myself sometimes like you should share, you know, like I have this kind of opinion. I, I want to come back to all those points, but let's just first give this example. You said you might have another example and you talk about suffering. Like you said, being with their suffering of these two and a half year olds, or if you talked about the uh, maybe another conflict example that you did resolve, uh, that you can remember how it resolved, that that would be really helpful. And maybe talk a bit about what you mean by being with the, the child suffering. Okay, yeah, this is a very good point. Because many times when the child is suffering, the way he acts, it's a, a way that we would say, this is a wrong uh, way to act. You are a bad child. Somehow, you, it comes this idea like you're trying to harm your sister. And not you see how beautiful your sister is? You have to kiss her, not to harm her. And this is something we do, but it, it's true that what she's living inside, it's a completely different feeling. In that very moment, if we really look deeply, if we really open to her and we see and the way she's uh, expressing what she's feeling inside, it's, it's really not easy what she's feeling. 
So if we do see the suffering, it's a lot easier to feel love and understanding and to embrace her and to give her the chance not to feel a bad person and to understand herself and to express herself and to feel that, oh, I'm loved even when I, I have these really like strong feelings that they are not so nice, but I'm loved. And this kind of love, this kind of uh, seeing her beyond these, uh, these feelings and trust her and speak about that and, and help her to feel understood, that relaxes her a lot, makes her feel really like, oh, I'm okay. It's just that what I'm going through is difficult and she understands me. And she was really like, she, she, I, I could see very clear that she was from anger. She went to sadness, a very deep sadness. And this, uh, having an adult that sees you and doesn't judge you and that uh, understands you is a really healing. I seen that it's really healing and it really helps her to bit by bit uh, deal with what she has inside and relaxed and understand it better. And it's very important also that she feels protected. She feels, oh, even I have these strong energies, this adult is there to protect the baby and to protect me from doing these wrong actions that after I wouldn't be happy with. So this is, this is very important to, for example, an angry child may want to hit you or hit someone or, or throw things and break things. And it's very important to, to be there to stop him from breaking or her from breaking things or from speaking bad to other uh, people or to harm even him or herself. But to do it with love, to do it with compassion, we need to understand he's not a bad child. He's going through a lot at the moment. He's suffering. And that makes uh, love rise into our heart. And that love, uh, together with the clear boundaries, it's a very, very good field where they can heal and transform. I saw it many times. So I want to I want to give people a moment now. Actually, I'm going to do a small maybe breakout room again because so maybe just to reiterate what I think is really um, what well, at least was also surprising for me, even in my experience with what Esther is saying is let's say often like what she, let's take in a case of an older child who is not being nice to their younger sibling, particularly when they're young it's not to be like, you should be nice. It's to really understand the suffering that is there in the older child or in, in another, I mean, I would also ask in a moment about a case of like conflict or even bullying or something like that. But I just want to say that what you're also saying is you also said was that for, to, for a child to be seen and really heard by an adult and by really heard, you don't mean literally like just the listing, but really kind of the sense that they're understood. Like this girl you talked about, this moment then when you understood her anger and then her sadness, that's a very profound experience for a child or any human being to have. And it also re re relieves them of a great deal of that suffering in somehow. And I wanted to maybe give people, maybe we could actually do it. Uh, I don't know whether I put people in breakout rooms. Here. Yeah, so I'm gonna put people in breakout rooms uh, again uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I might just need to move people here, uh, like just one second to room two that I'm going to do. Um, and I'm just going to ask you, ask a question. I need to assign some other people here. Uh, I'm going to assign Joanna in there. And uh, I think I'll leave Joseph in here. I'm going to give you a question, everyone. So I'm going to post it in the chat so everyone can see it. Um, but I want you to look at your own child and ask you, what was a happy moment? with an adult in your own childhood? And how was the adult being? You know, it might've been your parent, one of your parents, it might've been another, it might've been a relative, it might've been some, a teacher, it might've been anybody. And what were you doing and what was happening? So how was the adult being towards you and what were you doing and what was happening? So that's what I like to, I'm gonna give you a little bit uh, about, about three or four or five minutes just to reflect in pairs about that question for yourself. And we might come back and then share. So I'm going to open all the rooms right now. And uh, I invite you and Esther, you can obviously you stay in here and Joseph will uh, stay in here too, I think, for a moment. Oh, I haven't assigned either. Or maybe Sylvie, why don't I assign you? Oh, you're yeah, off your offline. Yeah. Okay, very good. So wonderful. My mother's going to join and Joanna is going to join. Joanna is joining, or I'm not sure. 
So Joe and Charlotte, welcome. And Esther, we're just gonna we can do the exercise in here. Um, you can listen yeah. and reflect. But hey, very much. First of all, very welcome. You came. Uh, Thank great you. to see you uh, this evening uh, uh, from all those months ago. And so yeah, just to give you guys a moment maybe to reflect, like on this question, uh, and we can reflect. Um, yeah, but what was the moment when you were really happy with an adult as a child, and how was the adult being? Mm. I don't like how to <laughs> but she did to think about when it was hard, like the opposite way around mm. and kind of yeah oh so our connection gone no you're still here and oh, take okay. your time take your time there's no rush Pete that's the whole point of the breakout room I mean mm -hmm. I could share for me very briefly I remember a very happy moment for me was with my father I must have been four i mean i was three four five i don't know young and we just come back uh from i think chopping wood in the wood and mm -hmm. we had a big bath together and there was just a sense of like I, we had this really big bath my father as a child was a, he was a big man but to me as a child seemed enormous and he was just being really relaxed and really present with me and i think that's right or just you know we were just playing almost together and just being really relaxed that's how i remember one really happy moment for me yeah. And uh, I guess he was very present with me. And we just, we'd just done something together. That was, I think, also the sense that we'd done something together and we were having a bath together. That was very special for me. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's just jogged in my memory, actually a quite uncannily similar one, which was, it was like around Christmas. I think it was maybe Christmas Eve or something. And me and my sister were getting ready the night before for Christmas Day. And my dad put us both in the bath as well. And I specifically remember him putting lots of bubbles in and like sticking the bubbles to our faces, you know, like, so we had a beard like Santa Claus and he was like putting it on our heads as well. And we were like seeing who could get the biggest beard. And yeah, it's actually one of the few times I can remember being so engaged with him and him being so, it's kind of like you, like very actively involved with you and creating something together and yeah lots of laughter I, I remember being quite like aware of this moment like wow this doesn't happen very often I'm gonna remember this and that's not actually come to my consciousness for a while till you just reminded me then so thanks for that but yeah just lots of presence and mutual I don't know mutual effort I don't know what the word is but like creating something together yeah that's mine well joe? joe great i'm just gonna what we'll do in a moment is we just we'll just wait for everyone to come back from the breakout rooms and then we might have someone share and then we'll come back uh, to maybe if people have got questions for us, but also I've got many more questions I can ask, but um, we'll come to that. Uh, um, the other thing um, and I will put uh, that in the meeting doc in a moment. Yeah, in the chat, sorry. In a moment, we're just having people come back. Um, I'm also mentioning that Esther will be running. Oh, well, I'll say it at the end. I'll say it in a moment. I'll say it now, actually, and then when everyone's come back. So in a moment, we might have people, uh, if Pete, anyone would like to share, that would be great. Um, I'm also just going to mention now, and I'll mention again in the end. I just always know some of you, people, we might run a bit beyond the hour. I'm going to put a good link to a Google uh, form uh, here, which is um, that, that I will just link, which is, Esther uh, will be running, a f uh, in collaboration with myself, I will be more the facilitator and kind of organizer. Esther will be leading it. We're going to be leading an con online conscious parenting uh, workshop about probably a five or six session. It will be on Zoom starting in March next year. And if you're interested, doesn't mean you're definitely going to attend, but if you're interested to find out more potentially to come, you can just fill out that form and uh, that I put in the chat and we'll send you more information or follow up about it um but which will involve kind of both kind of teaching the way of conscious parenting but also direct coaching you can bring your challenges or questions to to that um so i just wanted to check now does anyone like to share uh from the breakout room like one example they saw for themselves that they would like to share here 
uh, in 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 the in in the group. Just go ahead, by the way. Take yourself off mute if you'd like to. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah. So I can share uh, the things that really, like the memories that really came up to my mind when I read your question in the chat, were two moments with my cousin and my auntie, two separate moments. So one of them, I was with my cousin and she's 20 years older than me. So she was like a grown up woman and I was just a kid. But we had my grandmother and we were in bed because I was supposed to go to sleep, but she came with me and we laid down and we chit chatted a lot about our life. Like she asked me what I liked in my life and she would tell me what she liked to do in her life. So it was a lot about sharing and sharing experiences. That was a really sweet moment. And another memory I had was with my auntie, who's my mother's younger sister. And on that day, for some reason, I was allowed to ride in the front seat of the car with her, uh, which usually children don't do, right? And she would play music for me that she really liked. And so what I remember about those two specific moments is that I was really sharing with as the adult, as a person, and I was considered as a person who has feelings, who has experiences, and I was like able to hear about the other person's feelings and likings and experiences. So that made those moments very precious to not be considered just like as a kid, but really as an entire person. Yes, wow. that's what came up for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for sharing. That's really, really amazing. Uh, thank you very much. Well, we might have time if I'll come back maybe to another share. Right now, I want to come back to Esther maybe, and you could you could share a little bit more maybe about um, the approach of conscious parenting, and maybe with some examples, but what also makes it kind of distinct, maybe not distinctive, but a bit different from maybe uh, you know other approaches, huh? principles. the principles, if you like, of conscious parenting. Actually, Loan, I'm so happy with your sharing. It's so beautiful. And also uh, the sharings that we had with Joseph. And because it's also an answer to, to this question that uh, you are asking me. Uh, we really see the child, even if it's only a little baby or uh, two years old or 10 or 16 or 18 or even us or ourselves as adults. But we really take them seriously we really listen to them in a holistic way it's not that we just oh it's a child you know we, it's like we really like normally physically we we even if they are young we go down we kind of kneel down and we look at them if it's a baby we listen the way the baby moves the the way the the, the baby is, uh, says uh, the sounds uh, and we really open ourselves to that and we learn to really understand the baby. And the baby can already have an experience of being understood. And it's amazing. It's amazing how they grow with the capacity of communication. It's such a beautiful uh, example you gave, Luan, because when we do give this space and when we do listen and we do take them seriously, no matter what age they are and what way they, they express themselves, they become so amazing. And this is a present that they, they give us too. So this is one thing that it makes already a difference. It's not so much like the adults on one side, the child on the other, and they say something and it's like, ah, okay, we don't put uh, much importance or we don't take them seriously. No, we do take them very seriously in, in a way that they feel really understood. This is one of the, the strongest points. And it's easy to do it when they are happy, but also we do it when they are unhappy or when they have to put efforts. This is the other second point. Uh, we do not do for them things that they can do themselves. We give them the trust that they are not helpless and they are not like a victim or they are not something really like, I remember my, my, my baby, oh, my beautiful baby. Now it's 20 years old. Now it's... Uh, taming horses, wild horses. Now she's really, wow, a star for me, very, very old. I remember when she was a baby thinking, how will she be 
when she will be older. And I could not imagine. And now I see her and I'm like, God, it's just such a joy to see her grown up like that. So beautiful. But when she was a tiny baby, she was on the floor of my kitchen and she could still not crawl forward because for some reason she was doing more strength in her arms and she kept going backwards. And there was this onion on the on the ground of the on the floor of the kitchen. I can't remember how. Maybe I put it for her to play or whatever. I don't know. But I remember very well that there was this onion. And then she was really attracted to the onion. But when she was stretching her arm with the with the tip of her fingers, the onion would go a little bit farther away. She could not really grab it for only a little bit. And she was already doing her best, all her effort, because she kept going. She could not really go forward, but she only needed a tiny little bit and she could grab the, the onion. It would have been very easy for me to stop the onion so she could reach it. But I did not do that because this is another strong point of conscious parenting. We do not save them. We trust them. We give them the space. We, we, we know that they have the, the capacity if we give them the space and to to put effort on something is good. We don't need to avoid that. Even she got a little bit frustrated, like, and she started to yell a little bit, like, ah! And I, I, I kneel down, I look at her, I touch her back with a lot of presence, and I said, it's her. You're nearly getting it. And it keeps growing a little bit farther. And she kind of felt uh, understood, but I did not actually stop the, the onion. And this is the day that she started to crawl forward because she was so into the mood of taking this onion. And when she took the onion, she was so full of trusting her own effort, not in me saving her and putting the tension on me. She put all the tension in her own abilities. So this is another strong point. So it, it's always about that. And it's a lot, another third strong point of conscious parenting is the capacity to look at ourselves, it's not easy to see our children suffering and to stop ourselves from, from stopping the, the onion. And I have to deal with it and I have to trust what I'm doing. And it would be sometimes more comfortable to do it in another way, but bit by bit time comes and you see the difference. You see how the children grow with a lot of self-sufficiency, a lot of uh, intelligence, a lot of, uh, capacity to take decisions and to and to control their bodies so uh, but it's the third point is how do I um, cultivate the understanding of what is true love and how do I take care of myself to be able to really uh, go aligned with that and it's a very deep process of healing for the adult too just just to, just to really make this concrete Esther I think so I don't know if any, whether you've, whether you are a parent or whether you, you, you know, or you, you've been a child, I mean, or you've been around other children, whether you are, a, think of moments when you just want to sort it out for the, you know, like, I, I mean, I don't know. I think you had another example, um, you know, or, you know, like, or well, the je veux pas, but they, yeah, I have, I have a lot of examples. Je peux pas, je peux pas. But I'm also saying what I'm trying to, like, you could give other examples, but I'm also saying that what also, if we look in ourselves and in a moment when it's very annoying for us. So, for example, um, you know, like there are times for me where my son, my son does not want to take off his boots, like, and he insists, uh, you know, or he doesn't want to put them on. And I need to go, you know, like there's this kind of like thing in me of like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spend five minutes or 10 minutes while, and also with he shouts, like take off my boots for me because maybe one time I did it <laughs> for him. That what you see, I see in myself is a lot of suffering or frustration come up or and frustration is suffering of some kind. So if you as a parent have ever been frustrated with your child, and I think that would be almost all of us as a parent at some point. Um, that's their suffering there. And that's the third point Esther was really getting at, that one of the paths of conscious parenting is we need to deal with our own suffering as adults because that's what shows up in those. Why is it we don't, we give the thing to the child? Why is it we like, I told you I wasn't going to give you the sweet, but okay, I know, you've shouted so much, now I'm going to do it. Or 
I, you know, I, I wasn't going to help you put your boots on, but I'm just going to do it now because we need, you know, I, I can't take it anymore that you're shouting. And, th- and there's something that, well, I'm giving examples for myself. I see at those moments as some frustration or, or, or others or other, what you'd call suffering, sometimes craving, you know, I want to go and watch my thing or I want to go and write, read my book or whatever. I want to finish there, but I think it's just a really quite profound point is the third thing Esther was saying and how it relates to the other, the other two. And, and maybe you could give another example of, of the je peux pas, I can't. Or, 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 because, or, 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 I would say because we're yeah, almost yeah. on time that people might People have could questions. have questions. Sorry, yeah. Very good. I'm getting coaching from my second coach here. So the coaching is, are there people who have questions? I, there, I imagine there must be, but please just uh, put up your hand or come off mute. Yeah, I think Joe's got one. Joe, go ahead and ask your question. But please, anyone here, ask your question or write it in the chat. Hi, Esther. Um, hello. Hello. Thank you for this amazing talk. It's been very useful, especially for me, because I've just started working in a school with very young children as well. Um, And I was wondering, because, oh yeah, so the question was mine, not Joe's, by the way. I'm not just taking over. Um, I was just nudging. He was nudging me. Um, (laughs) So I guess the school has very amazing values that are in line with kind of like conscious parenting. It's very much about trusting the child and seeing them as a whole person and all great things, which is why I was very attracted to it as well. But I find just because we're human, when I'm there, a lot of the colleagues and other educators can sometimes not really be implementing those practices, including myself, probably. It's obviously easier to notice it in others, but like I remember in France, for example, you showing us a video of how to change a nappy in a child and there's the way to tell the child what you're doing and make them very aware versus, you know, just doing it quickly while they're not looking and that's kind of not really the conscious way to do it. But I was just wondering about maybe like practical ways to speak to people about this because I don't know if you've ever had to come yeah had to engage with other people but I have read other other adults about it yeah without you know thinking you're better than them and telling them what they should be doing because obviously I'm flawed too but yeah it was just quite disheartening for me to get there and not actually see it in practice uh yeah so just if you had any experience with that and how you can do slight little things. Yeah, that's my question. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for that question. I do have uh, uh, some experiences with it. And it's true that it's quite hard. So take care of yourself a lot because it's quite hard to be with a group of people who are not aligned with your way of being. And yeah, the first thing is, is to see that it's ideal or it helps a lot when there is the same, the same kind of uh, intention, uh, the same path. And it's true that I, I tried to work like this with some people who were not in the, same, uh, in the same line. And I did my best to find my ways to give the children what I believe they really need sometimes. Uh, I was a little bit, uh, people didn't speak very well about me because I would do things that they didn't understand. So I had to go with it. But I, for me, I was a little bit like, and then also some people would come and ask, oh, how come you're spending so much time with this child that nobody wants to be with? And I would answer very sincerely because this child is the one that needs more attention. And that's why I am with him the most. And, and then after I could see how the, the parents were, I could understand the suffering of the child even deeper. So uh, at the end, my choice was bit by bit to create uh, environments where the families and the other adults were aligned. So then the, it's a lot easier. But, uh, but the best uh, way to teach something is to really fully do our best to live it and to engage on it. And then when the people ask, then we sincerely answer. But instead of trying to uh, push it or trying to force it, because then sometimes they close instead of open. I don't know if this helps you a little bit. No, that's amazing advice, actually. Yeah, (laughs) thank you. You're welcome. It's so nice to see you both. I'm very happy. No, you too. You too. (laughs) 
Okay. I hope you come to visit me sometime. Please, yeah. yes, we'll be in touch. You're welcome. So would anyone else have any questions they would like to ask or, or share? Okay. I, well, I'm just aware. So first of all, just to say, I said we might run a bit long. Feel free at any point to drop at this point because if we are at the hour, which is our normal time, it is a privilege to have Esther here, so we might ask a few more questions. As I said, also, it's it's feel free. I might, um, you know, I, I will generally edit out the, this Q&A part at the end of the session, so don't worry about it being uh, in any way uh, recorded. But yeah, I mean, if there are questions, please put them in the chat, or if you come up with a question, just go ahead and ask it. I also flagged that Liam has put in the details of the residency uh, in the chat. So in terms of kind of questions, um, I think you mentioned something just now that you can say sometimes you've got one of the things that uh, that 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 I think that I've seen Esther that you might also is um, that you might talk to. And I might just uh, spotlight you again. Just one second. Um, is what do you do in terms of setting boundaries and then the front, you know, the front, you know, so like in terms of, let's say there's something a child wants, let, let's say an example might be getting dressed in the morning you know to go to, to have breakfast or go to school or whatever and the child doesn't do like doesn't you know they're supposed to get dressed but they're like they're not going to get dressed or they're supposed to get into bed at a certain point in time and they're still running around or whatever what do you do what would you do what kind of things do you do and then you've also talked about like kind of yeah you could talk to that and then and, and yeah i think particularly what the kind of dealing with the cleaning that might happen emotionally at that point Okay, I, in, in conscious parenting, the way we understand there are, it's very different when it's, uh, things are related to basic needs. For example, uh, uh, putting on the clothes or, or washing the body or eating. Those moments, the adult is quite uh, ready to help. And this, this uh, example I gave with the onion is not about cleaning or putting up the clothes or anything like that is about his her free will to move and to experiment things with her body. So uh, for the the for getting dressed and all that, uh, I can also help. I can also uh, put the boot on, but I'm also listening and I see that the child is also cooperating. But it's true that the child, even when it's only a tiny baby. The natural uh, rhythm of the child or flowing of the child is to cooperate and to bit, bit by bit get more space. But sometimes we are in a hurry and we don't see these little movements. We don't see that he's actually going to take the, the, a part of, of, the, of the jacket, for example. And we do it so fast and so good and so uh, that at the end they become a little bit like dogs because we sometimes are in a hurry and sometimes it's the way we we do it. But it's another point that it's important to, to do it in, in, a, in a relaxed way and listen every, we, we tell them, now I'm gonna do this. And we wait a little bit. And then the child uh, does a movement and then we help. And it's like a, a togetherness and cooperation, communication. It's not like I do everything or he does everything. So it's a process. And it's natural for the child to be private, get more and more uh, to do it him or herself. And then there is also a moment where the child doesn't want to cooperate because it's uh, kind of charged. And then it is, it's difficult for, for the child to be taken care, to be loved. And it's like full of uneasiness inside and rejects everything. Then in those moments, uh, Sometimes uh, there are, it's, it's, I don't have pills or, or, or ways that I always do it in the same way because every child is unique, every situation is unique. But for example, I remember with Atian that he didn't want to, to, to be dressed. He wanted to be with his doll and, and with his dummy and other things. And so her mother was saying to him, look, I'm waiting for you, but I don't allow you to go and play. So she would stop him. And he would cry and cry and she would say, yeah, I know you want to go to play, but now it's time that we change the, the nappy. And 
so he cried, but after a while, he, he himself took the, the doll and put it in the bed. And he took the, the dummy and took it in the bed. So he was already more ready. Still, he some moments didn't collaborate and the mother, instead of doing it, like in a, in a very impositive way, she would stop and listen to him. So when I'm going to, to help the child, if he's crying, for me, that's the, the priority, to listen that crying, to stop everything and to be there for him, to allow him to express. And when, when he's expressing it, be there for him is a big, uh, like, a, like a big uh, cream of love. And also then if he has a lot of tears, uh, we can clean the tears, but still we will be firm if he wants to go and pick the doll again or go uh, for a walk outside. If it's for us uh, the right time for him to, to go to the shower or things like that. So I can, and, so, Esther, can I just pick this up for people? Because it would be even great if we had a video of it, but just to explain, I think this is something that for me was quite um, like, like subtle, but also like a dramatic, a dramatic kind of insight because it seemed to be like this kind of combination of two things often in our in our other world like either people are like the child can do whatever they want yeah or at the other end no no the child must do exactly this and what you're describing which is very subtle was the combination of that if for example it's nap you're going to change the nappy you would you would stop the child playing like the child is like not cooperating in that sense and saying i want to go and run around or i want to go with my my doll you and you're even describing it certainly with small children you kind of block them physically and you say i'm not going to let you but at the same time it's not that we grab a child take off their nappy and put a new one on it, it's we, we we stop them doing other things so there's this kind of and there is a kind of we we're, we're going to be a we're going to be a, a gentle stand for them doing that thing there's this clear boundaries this clear um, structure and at the same time very profoundly you're saying we are there with their suffering their crying because often that's what will then happen if we're blocking them doing what they want but because also I think something you haven't quite mentioned but maybe is that normally what's there when they're not cooperating they're suffering there that's definitely what... it's true that when a child is uh, relaxed inside I've seen it in thousands of uh, different examples mm, for example if my child was uh, was calm and relaxed and he would uh, have knots in his uh, nose, I would say, but uh, maybe we go to the toilet to clean it and straight away he goes to the toilet and we clean it. And after he tells me, oh, here in the nail, I'm also dirty. And he loves so much to be taken care. Like all of us, we love being taken care. We love massages. We love people touching our hair and giving us time and space and love. But when we are, uh, when we have in our uh, emotional suffering for different reasons, that maybe the rhythm is, is too strong for us, maybe the adults are not present enough, maybe we had difficulties with our brothers or our friends, things like that. Many things happen in this society that charge us, stress the child. And I could see that, that the same thing that normally we enjoy so much, then we reject it. We, we don't want this, this love. We kind of, uh, and, and we don't want to stop and we need to keep running and then we don't eat well, we don't accept a, a hug or so for me it's very clear that when a child is really like uh, tranquil, uh, quiet inside himself, it's like I've, be, I've seen babies spending half an hour there lying down allowing their daddy to clean their, 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 their legs and to put oil and but no hurry at all. But when a child is charged, he cannot be like still. Uh, you stop a little bit to, to speak with a friend and he's already, let's go, let's go. Even a baby, so it's like, ah, starts moving and, and then you need to keep walking and then you want to change the nappy and you need to do it rushing and forcing. And, and many times I hear people saying, it's only a moment, come on, let's put it, it's only a moment. But actually those moments of taking care of the body they, they, sh they should be as long as possible and a moment of love and well-being and togetherness and cooperation. They are the base of uh, emotional stability. So we shouldn't do it in a hurry somehow. Yes. I, and what you're also saying, I think this is something just to bring out, 
in my experience of your coaching is the other thing that's maybe unusual that you also mentioned was then when that so let's say that's happened that's just gonna you know what well you know when i say we're all human it certainly happened with me and atia and my son that he is charged when you then do the blocks let's say you're changing the nappy or some other thing or it's eating the food and you are saying no we're, we're you know we're, let's let, we're not going to play but well the big thing you also said is you're then there with the child and their suffering you're then when they do get upset or what which will likely happen at that moment and shout and say i don't want to you know whatever it is we are we then take the time and it can be sometimes a very long time. So I remember a time with Esther where we went walking and Esther will might share, but walking is a very powerful way of sort of, it's both very joyful, but it's also a point when if there is emotional suffering there, it will come up at some point. I don't want to walk. I don't know if people have ever experienced this with a child, but I remember sitting there with Atian for 40 minutes on a road where he said, I won't walk. Shouting, sc screaming, crying, you know, I won't walk more. I mean, he could barely at that, he could probably talk, but just like shouting, screaming, you know, for 40, 45 minutes. And just being with him, just sitting there. And at that moment, I also say for us, that's when our suffering comes up, when it becomes maybe unbearable to be with that shouting, you know, and you're like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll just pick him up. But you're saying like, then what you do is to be there really with the child, with their suffering, really listen to them really really listen deeply and that's 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 also what's quite unusual in my experience of your approach that's very and also very powerful um that's no problem joe was that at that moment if you really can do it there's something that happens at the end of that maybe you could share in your experience of of, of maybe other examples you've seen what 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 happens both in terms of when you create these when there is some upset but what then happens at the end of that if you do that kind of cleaning, as you one might call it, emotional cleaning. Yeah, one thing is very important is to understand that I have a lot of years of experience. And what we did that day with Atian, I was present, I was supporting Rufus, I was kind of telling him what yes. was happening and, and how he was uh, blocking this uh, emotion only by being very close. For example, there was a moment that the, the child wanted to, to work, but uh, like this with with his father leg, you know, like like, and and I, and we do we do this in conscious parenting. The same I didn't I didn't give the onion to my to my to my baby. If a child can already walk, like we, it was a very short walk and very easy walk. It was not like difficult. And when a child is not charged uh, to walk, is amazing. They see the 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 little insects and the flowers and they sing and they pick up. We seen uh, that same day that in the beginning, Atien didn't want to walk at all. Once he could release the, the suffering by crying and being understood. Because if, if we cry, but nobody listens and understands to us, we feel so lonely that for one side, we're taking the suffering and for the other side, we are putting it again because we feel lonely and not understood. But that moment he was crying and his father was really present for him. He was doing his best to be present for his child. So after a while, he was he was discharged. And it was funny because the, he went all the way down. We went to a little church in the mountains. And then he went all the way up, which was a lot harder than, than what he had to do in the beginning. And he was so happy. And it was even raining. And we were amazed. They were their parents. It's true. Rufus and Sylvie were so amazed that uh, Atian was climbing and jumping and so happy, and that they even recorded it because they were so like, "Wow, this is amazing! Our child is just going crazy, like over the mountains." And you, because a child has a lot of energy and a lot of curiosity uh, and joy of walking, but when they are charged, uh, all of a sudden they only want to be picked up. They want to go back home. So how can we be there for them in a way that they can release all that and then be themselves free again? So at this point, I think we're going to come close to thanking Esther and bringing the evening to close. I do want to say if there's anyone you'd like to ask a question, I'd also want to say maybe on Esther's behalf, Esther does do uh, uh, also one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, she does phone calls and things like that. If people are ever curious you can reach out. If you don't know Esther's details directly, just reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with Esther 
I think most people have my details because I message you about the call probably or you're on the if not I will just put them in here uh just right now um and you also Esther but just to say I if there is any questions feel free to ask now but I did want to before that just say aha uh -huh, Joanna um please go go ahead you have a question hello Esther thank you so hello. much <laughs> you're welcome um I am I'm really suffering about sleeping at the moment with uh, my daughter Una, and uh, and I, I, I mean, really good with with food. I can be really present and really be there. But at night, when she won't sleep and she will and cry and cry and cry, like like she's such a calm baby during the day, and at night it's like she 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 just wails and. It is, I don't know what to do, how to be more present for her, basically, how to be there. I, I don't want to push her to sleep, but she needs to sleep. And uh, I need to sleep. And <laughs> I wonder if you have any, well, any, I bet you have a lot of experience with that. I know I'm not alone, <laughs> but it's, it, it feels very lonely place. Yeah. It's hard, uh, I understand, because uh, at night time you want to sleep and all of a sudden uh, she needs so much attention. And maybe when it comes to me, it always night time is like the, 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 the top of the iceberg. It is something deeper that we should try to understand what's happening and that it's not allowing her to sleep at night time. Myself, sometimes I wake up at night time with a lot of anxiety that I cannot feel uh, during the day because I'm too outside of myself. But it's true that at, at, uh, at night time we have to go inside of ourselves. We get closer to what we are living inside. There are not so many distractions. So for one side, it's like you say, during the day, she doesn't cry much. She's quite quiet. And we should see uh, if you practice a little bit, the, the presence is very nice on the way, like when she eats and be there, uh, but also at the same time, if we practice this giving a space for her to choose what she wants to do and when she encounters uh, difficulties, not to actually uh, do anything to save her or, or to make it easier. So maybe in those moments, imagine that, I don't know, maybe you're already doing it. The thing is that we should understand each other a bit more to go deeper in this. But imagine that she wants to pick something and she cannot reach. And she, if you, we, we actually didn't say, what, what is her age? She's 11 months. Yeah. Ah, 11 months. So uh, whenever she, for example, uh, with 11 months, is she already walking or soon is going to walk? No, she's starting to cr classically crawl now. She was like okay. going commando. And now, I mean, okay. I think yeah, I understand. Yeah, she's going so for a example, lot of Yeah, th there are many moments that maybe she wants to do things and she encounters difficulties. Uh, and maybe then you are there for her, but you don't do it for her. And she may then have the chance to to get angry, to cry, to ask for you to, to be her, her new arms. Because sometimes we do that. Before they fall, we already put the hand under their, their head. Before they want to get it, we already give it to them. And we eat, uh, we eat their space of uh, making effort or even crying in case that they cannot do it. And yeah. sometimes when they get more tired, and also it's good to have a rhythm that they have the chance to be outside and, and crawl uh, in, the, in the weather that it's not so warm sometimes and pick a stones and, and, and then if they either cry or they either get tired. And then that may help that when it's nighttime is a little bit more like uh, released. And because uh, normally, there are moments that there are either a lot of activity or crying, and that makes them tired. And also, if you have a rhythm of a rhythm that helps her to go to sleep, uh, that should help. But I see that normally working things during the day, uh, the, the sleep quality uh, naturally gets much better. And another important thing for sleeping is the autonomy of falling asleep by herself. 
like if, for example, I I have my baby in my arms and then I, I and he falls asleep on my arms or on my breast and then very subtly I leave her in her little bed or in my bed and then I go silently. The the change is very radical for the for them because they were with you and then they wake up in the middle of the night and it's like in a different place. So normally we try that they fall asleep by themselves in the place where they're going to sleep because the, the sleep has different rhythms and there is only a moment that it's deeper and then it goes a little bit like more soft. And then when she wakes up, if she knows how to fall asleep by herself again, she can do it without so much help maybe. But uh, of course, uh, your case, uh, we should work it maybe more like personally. It's just some ideas I'm giving to you, but sorry, because I cannot be very... No, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's great. I, I do want to bring, I hear my own son arriving <laughs> for, for Bath. Um, I just want to say, give a moment to say thank you to Esther so much for your time Thank you everyone for coming and your questions and your participation, your presence. But yeah, massive thank you to Esther. And I mentioned again, uh, the I put it in the chat. If you're interested, I said, I can also put you, some of you may have Esther's details already. If you want them, I can give them directly. And there will be uh, a, a course that we're running online in March on conscious parenting. Uh, I think probably five or six sessions that you, if you register in that form link, we'll send you more information as the details get clearer or to answer any questions. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much, Esther, for your sharing. Um, it was, yeah, I always find it profoundly valuable for myself. I hope others got value too. And uh, yeah, like for all that you, yeah, just for all that you bring to it. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for giving me the chance to share. This is a great pleasure for me too. I hope we see uh, soon and we keep sharing a lot and growing together.